Hi YouTube, it's Chaneli here, also known as Miss Be Helpful. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking a question that was submitted to me via Google Voice. So this caller reached out, his name is Adrian, and he had a question about the stock market. Now, if you're watching this video, the week that it came out, it's right in the middle of all the news around coronavirus. This call came in and I was like, all right, this is the perfect question for me to be able to tackle it. So I'm gonna play the question, you guys listen to this. This is from Adrian, and then after Adrian's question, we'll jump into my response. Hello, Ms. Bielpo. My name is Adrian. I'm calling from Denver, Colorado. I'm 26, uh, making 50000 a year right now. And this week will be my first week of investing. But I just want to know your advice on, you know, the stock market as it relates to the coronavirus. Is this a good time to invest and get some index funds or should we wait? Should we panic? You know, what things should we look out for throughout this time? Thank you so much for taking my call. All right, Adrian. So obviously you have all the right words there, right? Should I start investing this week? Should I wait? Should I panic? That's what the media wants you to think. The media, the news, all of the different things you're going to see on social media is definitely going to tell you to panic, to like, you know, think about your investments, to look at your portfolio, to see if what you're doing is right. But the actual truth of what you should be doing is the total opposite of that. You should not be panicking. You should not be worrying about timing the market. It's literally impossible for you to know what's going to happen in the news. There's there's no way you're going to know next month, next year. No one right now knows how long is this coronavirus thing going to last? Is it going to be done in a few weeks, in a few months? Is it going to last? Is it going to last a long time? Is it going to get worse? Like so much worse. How much worse is it going to get? These are questions that literally no human being can answer because we don't know the future. So because of that, instead of worrying, Adrian, just look at your financial situation. Make sure that you have paid all of your debt. Make sure that you're focusing on your debt repayment, that you don't have no outstanding credit card debts, that you don't have any high interest debt, you don't have you know crazy balances due on any of your loans or student debt, anything like that. Then get your emergency fund in place. Make sure you have at least three months rent or, or exp uh, three months of expenses, bills, food, rent, all of that transportation in a savings account so that if there's an emergency, you are good. You got it in your savings account. And then if you're good on that, if your debt is in good shape, you don't have any debt, you're paying it off or you're super close to being paying off your debt, you have a good giant cushion that you can sleep comfortably at night every night because you know that your money is in the savings and you're good for an emergency and you have extra money after that, then you know, okay, I'm good. It's time for me to start investing. If you're thinking to yourself that you want to invest money for the next two or three years and then take it out, rather, I just definitely wouldn't do that. If I were, if it was me, I would just put that money in a high yield savings account, lock it up in a CD, put it in a money market savings account, something that has a little higher interest, maybe bonds. So you can get a little bit more interest than a regular bank account, but you don't have to risk putting it in the stock market because if you need it within a year or two, you can't, you know, really bank on that money being there because with the stock market, you have to be able to stomach it going up and down, up and down. And actually the perfect article that explains this really, really well is um, one that's on um, a blog called Of Dollars and Data, which is written by Nick Majuli. He was actually on my YouTube channel last year. A good friend of mine, he has an amazing blog post, which I'm actually going to refer to now because this particular post looks at stock market performance from 1970 all the way through um, to, to 2019. And what he says is the big question here is how much better off would you be if you knew the future starting in 1970, if you had a crystal ball, you go back in time, it's 1970, you have a crystal ball, you could tell every single thing about the stock market in the future all the way through 2019. So you know when the stock market is going to drop and you know when it's going to be at the highest. So you could theoretically, I mean, you know, in this scenario, you would go in and only buy when the market is low so that you could buy low every single time. Right. So he says, how much better off would you be if you could buy only at the lowest points, at the absolute bottoms? He calls absolute bottoms. If you only invest in the Dow at the lowest possible price points and you just keep stacking up your money every time in between and then buy again when it's low again, then how much would you outperform? compared to if you were to just put a hundred bucks every single month into the stock market or whatever amount of money every single month and just keep putting it regardless if it's up or down. You would think that buying low would be a better strategy because you would get all this profit that you wouldn't get if you just dollar cost average, if you just keep on putting money in no matter whether it's up or down. But the reality is the answer is buying only at the absolute lowest bottom most points from 1970 to 2019 would only outperform dollar cost averaging, which is just continuing to invest every year no matter what by 0.4% annually. Every $100 that you invest, 
at the lowest points would get you 40 cents more in profit at the end of the year compared to my hundred dollars that I'm investing. And I'm not worrying about trying to buy low. I'm just investing it every single month, every single paycheck, like not worrying about when and just continuing to put in my money every single year, no matter what. He literally ran a simulation. He literally had the computer go back in time to 1970, know the future performance of the stock market, which is impossible in the real world. Nobody has the ability to tell the future and know when the stock market is going to drop in the future. But in this computer simulation, he actually entered the data, had the stock market go back to 1970 and only invest money at the lowest point in time. And even doing that, you would think you're going to make the most profit. This is how you make the most money, buying low. And the answer is it's not that much of a difference. It's only 0.4% annually. That is not that much. That's like a good uh, you know, expense ratio or management fee that somebody might pay in a mutual fund. Like that's literally not that much money. And so when you think about it like that, it just shows you that it's not really worth it. If your intention is to start investing in index funds and leave that money there until you need it 10, 20, 15, 30 years in the future, then yes, if you're ready financially, you have that extra money, begin to invest now. What are you waiting for? If you're waiting for a drop, Nick Majuli's article on, the, on the, uh, dollars and data will tell you straight up that you're wasting your time. It's not worth it, okay? It's not going to get you a better outcome anyway. So stop stressing and just start to commit to an amount. Every month, I'm going to transfer $25 out of my checking account into my investment account, into this index fund. And I'm going to start doing that every single month. And I'm going to commit to doing it, whether it's a good month or a bad month in the stock market. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it every single month, just like I wake up every day and brush my teeth, whether I feel like it or not. It's just something that you're going to commit to doing and do it every single month without fail. And in 10 years, in 15, in 20 years, it will pay off big time because the data over history, over time has shown that the market goes up over time. And then on top of this article, I also want to share a couple other things because I feel like the more information, the more data you have, the better you kind of finally sinks into your head that you can't worry about when you are trying to invest. The biggest point that you want to think about is, are you ready with your money? Not are you ready in terms of, is the stock market in the right conditions? The conditions are never going to be perfect. They're not going to be right. You never can tell whether this is a good time or not. All you can tell is whether you are in a good financial position to start investing. So I'm going to put two extra resources in the link, um, linked in the description box below. And one of them is going to be a site called macrotrends.net, which has a, a chart literally that shows you every single year's performance from the S&P 500, which is another list of 500 companies, another index that a lot of people like to use to represent the larger stock market. So the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are the two that I've talked about. Nick wrote about the Dow Jones. In this particular chart, you're going to see the S&P 500. And at the end of the year, it shows you what the performance was for that year. Now, almost every single year you see, as you start to scroll down on the chart, you can see almost every year is green. There's a couple red years, which means red means that the performance was negative, which means the stock market market drop or the performance was negative means you lost money that year if you invested or if it's green it means that the performance of the stock market was up which or the S&P 500 which means you made money now you can see as you start scrolling from 1970 all the way up to 2019 that almost every year almost all the years were green there were just some years that were red and you could kind of see which ones they are where they are they pop out at you because it's not very common that you would see a loss it is almost impossible for you to know which of the years the stock market is not going to do well. It's very, very hard for you to predict. And on top of this, there's going to be another link to the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, between 1896 and 2016 so that you can see all of the different historical events that have happened between basically 1900 and 2019 and how the stock market reacts as a, as a reaction to that historical event. So you can see like when a president resigned, when there was a financial crisis or a recession, you can see what happens when we went to war. You can see, I mean, literally every time something major happened, people weren't sure how the economy was going to be, you know, as a result of that event. So what do they do? They freak out. And so because of that, the stock market goes down, goes up, goes up, it go, and it responds like kind of like crazy. Hopefully this video has encouraged you to Sit down and decide, okay, am I ready financially? And if you are, that you'll begin to invest and that you won't be afraid of jumping into these index funds. But that if you're not ready financially, that you first take the time to clear up that debt, get that emergency fund in place before you begin to invest. Because you want to make sure anytime you're investing, it's with excess, extra money. Money that you could throw it out the window or flush it on the toilet and it wouldn't affect your situation right now. Because it's not money that you need to rely on. Just make sure that's the bottom line, that you get that down. Um, but other than that, 
you know, do a little bit of research, find a good brokerage firm that you trust, that you rely on. I have a couple other videos that I will link in the description box about this as well. But I mean, once you find the brokerage firm that you like, that has good customer service, that has really good fees, low fees, that you're not going to pay really high fees or expense ratios for your index funds. And that has a really good diversified index fund, like something like S&P 500 or Vanguard Total Stock Market with lots and lots of companies in there, then that you know that you're going to be in good shape long term. So don't be afraid of these trying times of these confusing things that happen in the stock market because at the end of the day, fear is probably the biggest um, regret that people have. Oh, I was too scared to do this. I wish I hadn't been that scared to do it. The earlier you start investing and the longer you wait before you take out your money from your investment account, the more it's going to grow over time. And especially when you keep on adding more money into that account. That's all I have for you guys. Adrian, I'm sorry that was a super long answer, but it's just like really important for you to kind of go through all the steps and think about this and all the different pieces of it. And it's not just a yes or no. And it's not just a simple answer. And you really do have to understand, you know, the history and understand the thinking behind why you would decide to start investing now or not. It's really about your personal financial situation and that's all that matters. Um, so that's pretty much what I have. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about all these different resources that I share with y'all. The post from Nick on his blog, the macro trends um, link that shows you all the different returns of the S&P 500 over time. Like that, looking at that chart and seeing like you could clearly see the green years and the red years. There's way more green than red. So it just makes more sense to not try to time it and just be in there the whole time. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. And um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. You guys can reach out to me at missbehelpful at gmail.com. If you have questions, you can also find me on social media. And just like Adrian you can call me and leave me a Google Voice recording message or voicemail, and then I will listen to the question, post it up here on my channel with a response in video um, so that you might end up hearing your own voice right here on my channel. And uh, if you like that idea, the number is on my screen right now, which is that number to the Google Voice. Um, but that's pretty much what I have for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Until next time, peace.